What's going on everybody, Baird here back again with Specatech. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the SVS PB2000 Pro for you guys. Uh, if you haven't seen my other videos, I did do an unboxing as well as a Rue compression test uh, video. If you wanna check those out, just uh, click on the uh, link in the top right hand corner of this video. Before we get into the video, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe, tick the little bell icon so you can be notified when my next video drops. All right, before I get any farther with the video, again, I just wanted to thank Summit Hi-Fi for supplying this subwoofer to me for review. Summit Hi Hi-Fi is an amazing business based in Ontario, Canada. Uh, he has a website for the Canadian buyers and a website for the US buyers, which I'm gonna link down below. I highly recommend that you check out that website. Um, Amir is amazing to deal with there at Summit Hi-Fi. Like I said, it's some of the best customer service I've ever experienced in my life. So thank you Summit Hi-Fi for supplying this subwoofer. All right guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the specs, the build quality, the performance, the sound quality, and then my final thoughts. We'll get into that right after the intro. Okay, welcome back guys. Uh, without further ado, I'm gonna get right into this video. First of all, uh, let's talk about the price. The price of this subwoofer is $899 and that is for the PB2000 Pro which is the ported version, the sealed version, which is the SB2000 Pro is $799 US dollars. So let's discuss the specs of this subwoofer. Uh, so like I said, I'm talking about the PB2000 Pro which is the ported version. As you can see, it has two ports uh, which are three inch ports and they can be plugged but you will have to request the port plugs from SVS. I've uh, been told by several people that all you have to do is request them and they will send them for free. Uh, although they are for sale on their website, it sounds like they will send them to individuals who have purchased a subwoofer for free. So keep that in mind. It does not come in the box. All right, so the dimensions of the subwoofer are 14.6 inches high, 14.2 inches wide, and 15.6 inches deep. And that is with the grill installed. Without the grill installed, it is one inch less deep. So it is 14.6 inches deep. All right, so the driver is a 12 inch high excursion long throw driver with an aluminum voice coil and it is a dual layer voice coil. The magnet on this driver is a dual ferrite magnet and the motor assembly weighs over 25 pounds on this driver. So it is a very solidly built driver. So the amplifier is a Sledge STA 550D, which in the words of SVS is conservatively rated at 550 watts RMS and 1500 plus watts peak. So it does have fully discrete MOSFETs uh, on this Class D amplifier. Now this amplifier does have a built-in DSP along with the SVS uh, Bluetooth app control. So for those of you that are looking for uh, ease of use uh, or being able to um, change settings on the fly, the app is definitely a bonus. It is nice not to have to get up from your chair to change any settings. There is some people that like to change uh, the subwoofer settings for say music versus movies or certain types of music or certain types of movies. So it is nice to have that app. So you can change things like the low pass filter, you can change the phase, you can change the volume or the gain. You can also have some PEQs on there. The app is fairly extensive. Uh, so I do recommend that you check that out if you are looking at buying one of these subwoofers. Okay, so let's talk about the connections on the back of the subwoofer. In the top left hand corner of the amplifier, you will find the SVS SoundPath wireless uh, audio adapter. Uh, input and output for the line levels, uh, which is a left and a right channel RCA for output and a left and a right channel for input. And then the right channel on the input being the LFE. So you run your subwoofer uh, RCA cable directly to that if you're using an unbalanced connection to your AVR. And this PB2000 Pro does come with a 12 volt trigger as well, so the standard 3.5 millimeter plug. Besides that, you do have an on-off switch and a standard AC cable connection. In addition to that, you do have six buttons on the back and that is what you can use to control the internal DSP. So all the functions that you can control from the app, you can control from those buttons as well if you don't want to use the app. You'll also notice that there are 11 LED lights in between those buttons, and that's just to help give a visual indication of what levels you're setting. From those buttons, you can also control whether the amp is on all the time or it is uh, set to auto mode, which will turn on after a signal is sent to it. All right guys, I think that's enough about specs. All right, so now let's talk about the build quality. So first let's talk about the good. So the good is this thing is a solid box. Um, I have no complaints whatsoever. There's nothing rattling, there's nothing loose. Everything seems to be made with decent build quality. The driver seems stiff and rigid. Uh, the box, it's made from uh, MDF and it seems to be braced well enough. Uh, it seems very solid. And besides the fact that it is built fairly solid and I have no complaints, uh, it does look quite nice as well. This is the black ash version, uh, which I do like. It has a little bit of texture to it, which just adds a little bit of a, an aesthetic look that I like. I'd rather have a little bit of texture to it than a smooth sticker type finish. As far as the grill goes, guys, uh, it does look nice once it's installed. 
Uh, but one complaint I would have would be the grill on the uh, previous version, PB2000. They had that nice heavy-duty uh, steel grill, whereas this one's a plastic frame with uh, just acoustically transparent material uh, put over top. So, I mean, it works. It does the job. Um, but I just, I would have liked them to stick with the more heavy-duty grill. It just has a more premium finish, in my opinion. And the grill, as you can see, we have the grommets uh, in, in the cabinet here, and the grill just has plastic pegs which stick into those grommets. So again, you might want to be careful with those pegs, they might break off easier. Overall, I do like the build quality. It's a nice, somewhat generic looking subwoofer, but it does have a slight aesthetic appeal uh, because of that textured black ash, uh, which doesn't reflect quite as much light as a glossy finish. Overall, it is a very solid build quality, and I don't think anybody should have uh, any major complaints other than maybe the grill. All right, guys, I think that's enough about build quality. Let's talk about the performance. Uh, so when I first plugged this thing in and turned it on, it didn't run Odyssey. I didn't do anything. I just wanted to see uh, what it was capable of fresh out of the box. Uh, so I plugged it in and put on some fairly bass heavy music. And to my surprise, this thing was shaking the room quite significantly. I could actually feel uh, my pant legs shaking as well. And this was just from running the uh, single 12 inch driver. So keep in mind that I'm coming from uh, dual TV 3612 subwoofers from Power Sound Audio. So I'm, I'm running quad 18s in my room. Um, so for it to impress me right out of the box, being a 12 inch driver, that says something about this subwoofer. So I put this subwoofer through its paces. So I played some movie scenes. From Star Trek, I played some movie scenes from Aquaman. And in my home theater room, I do have some sh a shelving unit, and I was getting some significant rattle and shake from that shelving unit. I wasn't expecting one 12 inch driver to show me the imperfections of my room as much as this uh, subwoofer did. It's been a long time since I've ran a smaller subwoofer in this room. Um, I've been working my way up for quite some time now. Uh, so it was actually a surprise. I was impressed that this single 12 inch driver was able to shake that unit so well. As a matter of fact, when I was playing some bass heavy music uh, from YouTube just to test out a little bit more after I'd done some Roo measurements, I have some movies that I haven't yet uh, alphabetized in my shelf and they were just placed on top of the other movies and both those movies rattled off the shelf. <laughs> so I was actually shocked that this, this subwoofer was, was able to do that. So I'm the type of person that likes significant tactile uh, bass in my system. So I took the subwoofer and I put it behind my main listening position just to see what tactile response I could get from it. And I must say I wasn't disappointed. I mean, obviously it's not as much tactile response as I'm gonna get from my TV3612 behind my main listening position, but it provided a good solid amount of tactile response. There was some, some fairly hard hits. Uh, it had some nice rumble, it had some nice shake. You could feel it in your back. You could feel it in the seat of your chair. I don't think anybody would be disappointed if you're placing this near field to your main listening position for some tactile response. So overall with the performance guys, I was happy with this 12 inch subwoofer. Um, I don't think you're gonna have anybody have any complaints regarding the performance of the subwoofer. It's nice and tight. It's got some decent uh, mid bass. It has some decent rumble. Uh, it, 
as you can see from my Rue video, it does uh, get down to 16 hertz uh, as claimed by SVS. I mean, I wasn't getting there within 3 dB of its peak, but it was a fairly flat response, and I was still I still had usable output down to 16 hertz. I believe it's about 100 decibels. So the subwoofer does offer you some response below 20 hertz. All right, guys. So let's talk about the sound quality of the subwoofer. Uh, we talked about the performance, and I was pleased with the performance, and I was also pleased with the sound quality. It is it's tight, it's clean. Um, I didn't really notice any distortion uh, when I was running Rue measurements. Of course, you're, when you're doing compression testing, you're you're taking the volume quite high. I didn't uh, hear anything that sounded off to me. I didn't hear any dis like distorted or any uh, muddy bass or anything. Uh, even though I was pushing it to, to reference volume, it still stayed clean and tight. Now obviously, the more you spend, the better uh, sound quality and the more performance you get from a subwoofer. But for the price you pay for this subwoofer, I would say the sound quality is on par for what you pay. And I don't think there's anybody that's gonna complain about the sound quality of the subwoofer as long as you're going into it with the expectation of you get what you pay for. So again, to sum it up on the sound quality, guys, uh, I was happy with the sound quality. I wasn't disappointed. I can't think of any complaints of the sound quality. I never had any port noise. Overall, thumbs up on the sound quality. All right, so now it's time for my final thoughts on the subwoofer. So overall, I would say this, uh, I have to give the thumbs up on this subwoofer. The only complaint I really have was regarding the build quality, which was the plastic grill, which again, I mean, it's more of a nitpick. It's definitely not something that you should base your decision on, is whether or not the grill is made of metal or made of plastic. It just would have been nice for them to stick with that more heavy duty grill. As far as performance and sound quality goes, you should be happy with this subwoofer. Is there better performance out there? Of course there is. You may even be able to get a little bit better performance for the price, but again, it's it depends on what you value in your subwoofer. Maybe there's some of you out there that want that app control. Maybe there's some of you out there that just like the SVS brand. But for the price you pay for the subwoofer and the performance you get, um, I'd say it's fair. It's a fair value for sure. You're getting below 20 hertz performance. Uh, you're getting shake your pant legs uh, kind of bass. You're getting a decent amount of tactile response, especially if you put it behind your main listening position, like I said. You're getting the app control, all for $899. Now, I know that everyone out there has different preferences when it comes to subwoofers, or they feel that this one performs better than this one. Uh, but overall, this is a solid subwoofer that should be on your list if you're looking for a subwoofer in this price range. All right, guys, so that concludes my final thoughts. So if you guys like this content, if this is something that helped you out, if you're looking at buying the subwoofer and you find this information useful, please make sure you smash that like button. It really does help out the channel. And if you are new here, make sure you subscribe, tick the little bell icon so you can be notified when my next video drops. And as always, guys, stay techy.